Hey everyone, it's Lisa, uh, and today not only are we competing against the road traffic that you can always hear, but they've been power washing the stairs behind my building for the last like four hours. Um, so we're hopefully going to film before they start back up again, but if they do, I apologize and we'll try to make the best of it. I also kind of blend into the couch right now. Uh, I don't know. But this is the shirt that I'm wearing, so this is where we are. So today I thought I would give everyone a little background about myself and how I ended up in medical school. So I graduated high school and went to my state university, University of Rhode Island, undecided. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I actually was very adamant that I didn't want to do medicine. Please, no, no! But I ended up deciding to study kinesiology, which is the study of the movement of the human body, basically exercise science, and my concentration was specifically in exercise science. And I thought this was great. I absolutely love exercise, really needed some sciences in my life. Uh, my first year of college, I actually didn't take any, so I was desperate for them by second semester that year. And I thought, I'll be a physical therapist, my life will be great, make a decent salary, have a nice cushy job. And then I spent eight hours in a physical therapy clinic and decided never again. God bless the physical therapists out there. Y'all are amazing because I could not do it. The knees, the elderly people who never do their exercises, uh, the people who come in saying nothing's working even though they literally are like walking around when they're meant to be resting or resting when they're meant to be walking around. I give you guys a lot of credit. I couldn't do it. So I started looking into other careers, other paths that I could take. Um, I tried occupational therapy. I did an internship in chiropractic. And I really found that I liked that patient uh, interaction but I just really didn't like the therapy specialties and that's where my best friend comes into play uh, my best friend Julie is a doctor currently um, and so she was the one who suggested to me why don't you look into med school like why are you messing around like you have the grades why don't you just do it um, so it's her fault I blame her <laughs> uh, so I ended up looking into med school and realizing that I wasn't prepared now I wasn't pre-med as I said I studied kinesiology and I had done most of your basic sciences, but I don't have a heavy biology background at all. I'm, I only took bio one and two, and I hadn't done organic chemistry or biochemistry. So I had to do extra classes after I graduated. So I graduated in 2015, and then I took a year of taking extra classes, biochemistry, organic one and two, um, and a writing class actually, which is a random requirement, but I needed it for most med school applications. The thing with med school applications is they claim that you don't need to fit in a specific bubble that any sort of sciences might fit the requirement um, but I think it's a lot stricter than people might let on in the application they want to seem like they're a little more open but that doesn't necessarily mean they are um, a traditional bio pre-med background um, is the best chance you're gonna have to get into med school in the States um, by far but either way, I was giving it a go and decided to go take these classes. At the same time, I started volunteering at my local hospital. I did, oh God, I don't know, like a year, maybe a year of volunteering on a nursing ward, being mistaken for a high schooler the whole time. Lots of fun. Um, filling water jugs. I mean, that's really what you do as a volunteer. I also did some shadowing with a doctor that I knew in my personal life, and she allowed me to do I think I did 400 hours actually, if I'm, if I'm gonna remember correctly. I, I did a lot, I did about six months of shadowing several days a week uh, at her practice in internal medicine. So that was really the big prep for the year after I graduated. So I finished my degree and then I did this year of prep, volunteering, observership, extra classes. Then started application year. And for application year, I got a job as a medical scribe I cannot recommend this enough. It was the best decision I ever made. It's really what sold me on the fact that I actually could do medicine. I was an emergency room medical scribe and basically what that means is you follow the doctor around and take notes for them the whole time. So you're just literally writing notes for the doctor. So you learn a lot. You learn a lot about note writing. You learn a lot about billing. You learn a lot about medicine. And everybody that I was with was also looking to go into the medical field for the most part. It was kind of a temporary job for most of us as we applied to our next step. So that was really nice to be surrounded by people who are also going through the same process. So that's what I, I got that job right as I started applying to medical school. 
the application for medical school is a very long process. It takes a year and you have to get letters of recommendation. You have to put together your um, you know, CV, your application, uh, you, essays, all this stuff. So I'll detail that a little bit more in my next video. And that'll be part two of this um, about what I needed to do and how I went about that. But I was a scribe part time that entire year. Now, on top of that, I was also trying to make money. So being a scribe, unfortunately, just doesn't make you a lot of money. And I have always been, uh, I always babysat. So I decided that I would babysit and I was actually helping a family homeschool. So I did part time scribing. And then my other half of my life was basically being a nanny and helping homeschool. So that's what I did my second year after graduating from undergrad. So I'll give you the dates so it's a little clearer. So I graduated in 2015 in the spring, and then I spent one more year taking classes. And in the spring of 2016, I started as a medical scribe and started the application process for medical school. Then in the fall comes interviews, uh, fall of 2016. And then acceptances are in the spring of that 2017 year. And then fall of 2017 is when I matriculated into medical school. Okay. That was a lot. There's a lot of information. Um, is there anything else I'm missing? So that's really my story and what I did prior to coming to medical school. Um, but I have some friends who took a different route from that. I have some friends who are here in Ireland who graduated from their undergrad degree and the next fall started in medical school. So there are definitely people who do that. Um, there are also people who take plenty of time, maybe do a master's. I have a lot of students in my class who, who have master's degrees um, that they do in the middle, whether in a, a master's of public health or master's in biology or genetics, something that they're interested in. So the average age of medical school uh, matriculation is actually older than you think. It's like late 20s, early 30s. Uh, most of my classes in their late 20s. I'm actually on the younger end of the class. Um, and I'll graduate at 26. So that just gives you guys a little bit of um, idea of what you're competing against. So, you know, the applications are difficult and, you know, you're competing against people who have really nice applications, you know, just like you. So it's good to keep that in mind when, when moving forward and what things you ought to have on your CV before you apply, which is why I spent that year doing volunteer work, um, observership, and taking the classes that I needed to take. Oh, and the MCAT. Oh, I forgot the MCAT. Okay, we'll talk about the MCAT in the next video. All right, guys, so that's it for part one. And that's just a little bit of background about myself and how I got here and kind of what people do before they even apply to medical school. So the next video that I'll uh, upload will be part two of this, the pre-med school saga. And it will let you guys know a little bit more about application season and actually getting accepted into medical school and then we'll move on from there figure it out together guys so i'll see you in the next video bye